Thanks for joining us on Tandem Radio for a very special segment by design, focused on helping you understand how God designed you so that you may be healthy and productive in fulfilling God's purposes in your life for many years to come. Now let's join our host, health expert and public speaker, Dr. James Prudian. Welcome to the By Design Radio Program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity, and as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to educate you and your families to feel better, to function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. Welcome this week. <clears throat> we're on a topic of nutrition. Uh, I think we're at show 10 or 11 at this point. Um, we're going to be doing a couple of things today. We're going to be talking about some, uh, uh, a, I have an article that I want to go over with you guys about milk, and then we're going to get into more uh, ba- back into inflammation. Remember, inflammation is one of those foundational subject matters that we've been talking about on the Pyramid of Health. And you could email me if you'd like at uh, jprudian at naturalhc.com. That's J-P-R-O-O-D-I-A-N at naturalhc.com. And I'd be happy to send you these slides if you'd like, the Pyramid of Health and the Triad of Health. And the Pyramid of Health has eight subject matters that I've premise this show on. All of our shows that we're going to be doing are on eight foundational core subject matters. But there's going to be topics as we go through week by week, and it's many of our shows, but you're going to hear me refer to the triad of health, which is physical, nutritional, and psychological, because the more literate we all are in the facts of healthcare, the better we'll feel, the better we'll function, and uh, avoid those chronic illnesses that are plaguing our country. Remember Luke 137, for with God nothing is impossible, so that I feel and my role as an educator, as well as a clinician in private practice, not just seeing patients knee to knee, which I do um, for almost 20 years now, but as a health educator for almost 20 years, in and out of companies and organizations and, company, and, and um, um, schools and universities, I speak at no charge. Um, Wellness at Work, which is my uh, public speaking company, is going nonprofit this year and um, over the last you know 20 years I've done it at no charge and now I'm just gonna officially make it into a nonprofit so we're real excited about that um, the educational process is just really about what I talked about last week call to action we as Americans are really being uh, let's say say passive about our health we need to take the call to action of taking back our health and in order to do that we my job, I feel, my place in this world is to make you guys and the people I come in contact with just more aware and more disciplined about seeing things with a different set of eyeballs. We realize that the chronic illness epidemic that we're all dealing with, not only, maybe we don't have, I physically don't have obesity and type 2 diabetes that I'm dealing with, but I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it because the healthcare costs go up every year because we're living in a sicker and sicker society. Mayor Bloomberg recently, he used one of my statistics that I use when I speak. And that is that right now, we have more people suffering from obesity than starvation. That's a radical change in the world. With this, uh, another statistic is that this will be the first generation of children, if you were born after the year 2000, to have a shorter lifespan than their parents. That's the first time in Western civilization history that that's happening. And that is due to man. That is man's interjection. Man has gone into the food supply. It has altered the way we're stressed out, the way we eat, the way we exercise. And man's food supply has, is 90% processed and 90% man-made. And that's why we have to go to the inflammation model. So I grabbed something off of uh, the natural news. This was written uh, by Mike Adams um, about the uh, U- US dairy industry petitions the FDA to approve aspartame as hidden unlabeled additive in milk, yogurt, eggnog, and cream. So uh, just read you a couple of things from here. Um, you probably already know that the FDA has declared war on raw milk and even helped fund and coordinate um, raids you know, against raw milk farmers. Um, the, the basically, the, the goal, the thing here is the situation is getting you know, even more insane, as he's saying. The International Dairy Foods Association and Mil- uh, National Milk Producers Federation have filed a petition with the FDA asking the FDA to alter the definition of 
milk to secretly include chemical sweeteners such as aspartame and sucralose. Uh, importantly, none of these additives will be on the label. Uh, they will simply be swept under the definition of milk so that when a company lists milk on the label, it automatically includes aspartame or sucralose. Uh, and if you're trying to avoid aspartame like I know I am, um, you'll have no way of knowing since it won't be listed on the label. Um, this isn't only for milk either. It's for yogurt, cream, sour cream, eggnog, whipping cream, 17 products you know, in all. So, you know, big business loves to change uh, definitions of, of our food and slipping in, for instance, uh, the, the high fructose corn syrup in 1980 or in the 70s, the high hydrogenated corn oil, these man-made substances that our body's cells don't recognize. It looks at them almost as foreign agents and they're toxic to the cell. So this toxification by man-made food has caused so much of the illness that we're dealing with because our bodies just don't recognize it. Almost a third of Americans die from cancer now. So it, what is cancer? Well, it's an you know, abnormal uh, you know, replication of cells, cells that divide in an abnormal way. And so why is that happening? Well, you could bring up trans fats as one of the causes. Trans fats is things like margarine, hydro hydrogenated corn oil. These are rancid fats. These fats that are in clear containers, which fats should never be in, they should be in dark uh, containers. And this is just one of the one of the things. And now we were talking about adding sugar man-made additives to our milk. And whether you're for or against milk, that's not that's not the common conversation I'm having with you right now because that's for another show whether or not you drink milk or cow's milk because the the you know part of the conversation on milk I'll go down the road a little bit is that yeah cow's milk is good for a calf but whether or not a human being should be consuming cow's milk is a whole other story but when we take cow's milk and now here's the uh, the um, milk lobby petitioning the FDA to change the definition so that the actual definition could include sugar additives, that makes me a bit angry. As a parent of five, my call to action is to protect and take care of my children and educate my patients. I don't feel as though putting aspartame in milk, whether you drink it or not, is a good idea. I don't want man-made chemicals put into my food supply. And if you do put it in my food supply, you better list it on the outside of the box so I could read it and make an educated decision. And this is what's happening. What's happening is and everybody needs to be aware of these things that, you know, we talked about last show that there is food and then there is treats and food is meant to be consumed and we have treats during celebrations. A few times a year you have a celebration and you wanna have a glass of soda or do things, that's fine. But when we do this day in and day out, our bodies are pretty much toxified. And what ends up happening is we're dealing with this host of inflammation. So the standard American diet, which is 90% inflammatory, that means the food that we're eating is causing an inflammatory reaction inside of our bodies. That inflammatory reaction causes the host of chronic illness that we're dealing with. Things even, um, when you think about inflammation, any word that ends in I-T-I-S means inflammation. So colitis is inflammation of the colon. Neuritis, inflammation of a nerve. You know, arthritis, inflammation of a joint. So if you had a swollen ankle, you wouldn't, and, you, and let's say you jumped off the table 10 times in a row in a swollen ankle, we could all sit around and say, well, that's a pretty, you know, dumb thing to do. Yet every day people who have swollen joints and swollen colons and swollen nerves and swollen backs and headaches are eating inflammation. It's kind of a dumb thing to do. So one of the things, you know, our takeaway, what's our call to action? How do we limit the amount of inflammatory food that we're eating? Well, ding, 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 let's go back to God's design, by design. Green, dark green leafy vegetables are just an essential component to, to diet, to your nutrition, to your health, to your longevity. Fruit is the other one. So dark green leafy vegetables and fruit, start there every day, a multiple bountiful servings of fruits and vegetables. Um, cold water fish from the Pacific Northwest, if you could get it like salmon, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, highly anti-inflammatory food, just like grass-fed fed protein. And what does that mean? If you think about cows who are out grazing on grass, 
which was yesteryear before we've started to feed them corn, which is a highly inflammatory grain. Look for grass-fed beef at your supermarkets and uh, stores that you shop at. I'd like to buy the uh, cheaper cuts and the stew meats. And if we're going to eat red meat, at least buy high-quality grass-fed beef and please buy your chicken organic because chicken is probably the, one of the most polluted animals that is, is, is raised. And the steroid and antibiotics that are used in these animals are obviously getting into us. So these are foods that can reduce pain and inflammation, green leafy vegetables or dark green leafy vegetables, fruit, cold water fish, grass-fed protein, nuts and seeds, and walnuts are the ones highest in the omega-3 fatty acids. Buy the nuts unroasted and unsalted and plenty of water. That is the beverage of choice. That's God's beverage. That's what we we're meant to do. If you're gonna take nutrients or supplements, supplements can be a uh, very important component of reducing inflammation in the body. Obviously, fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, which are made up of EPA and DHA, are very important. Do not take fish oils if you're on blood thinners. If you're on blood thinners, you should not take supplements unless you consult with your doctor. Um, vitamin E is also a great nutrient to help reduce pain and inflammation, which is found in nuts, um, along with a lot of the foods that I've already mentioned. Um, a multivitamin, multimineral might not be a bad idea. And cooking with ginger, turmeric, baswala, garlic, onion, rosemary, these are wonderful herbs that impact the amount of inflammation in the body. Just absolutely wonderful, natural, God-given herbs in other parts of the world where they use these herbs to cook with more, uh, they have less pain and less inflammation inflammation. So those types of things we want to be looking at at reducing our inflammation, our call to action when we shop, if we want to buy the abundance of, of these types of things. I'm going to give you a health tip for the week here. Um, my wife had given me something out of a magazine and I wanted to share it with you. And it's a, a very interesting little thing. Trim your TV time. The happiest people watch less than one hour of te television a day, according to a study of 40,000 people who took National Geographic's True Happiness Test. Why? We get more authentic happiness from being with family and friends, reading or engaging in a hobby. What's more, TV, both advertising and programming, is designed to make us want more. So what ends up happening is we're watching TV and we want more. So we want to pare down on TV, uh, place it in an out of the way room, um, and get at, don't, don't, if you're watching more than one hour a day, really to call to action here, let's start limiting that TV. Let's spend more time with family, friends, and hobbies, um, as well as getting into scripture, a uh, much better way to spend our time. And um, there's a couple of, uh, uh, of books that are on my website, naturalhealthcarecenter.com. I have a full array of books that I, I, I love my audiences to read on the subject matter of nutrition and anti-inflammation. Um, thank you for joining me this week. I was a little all over the place, but remember our call to action. We want to take care of our family, our friends, by making better decisions. My name is Dr. James Prudy, and this is By Design. Thank you for listening to me this week, and have a blessed week. You've been listening to By Design with Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare. To learn more, visit us at tandemradio.com, that's tandemradio.com, or on Facebook. And don't forget to email us with your questions. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope you have a healthy week, and we look forward to you joining us next time for more fantastic insights from Dr. James Prudian on By Design, a special production of Tandem Radio.